Hey, welcome home, everybody. We're Jeremy and Sarah, and you are watching Legacy Television. Well, thankful you tuned in today because we're going to continue on in this new series of messages that we began last week. So if you missed that one, let me encourage you, download the Legacy Studios app. It's free. You can go back and watch all of our broadcasts. They're free, and they're there for you. They're there for you to get the Word of God down on the inside of you and watch it change your life. So get into this with us today and let the Word do what only the Word can do, which is strengthen you, encourage you, and establish you in your faith and your walk with the Lord. We want you to know that you're loved today, and even more than we love you, God loves you. Yes, and one does. of the greatest ways that He loves us is by giving us rich, rich Word and rich revelation. So we just, our prayer is that you would receive today and anything that you have not seen yet, that you would see and that you would know your next steps Amen. in this life of faith. So Father, we receive your Thank word you, with open Lord. hearts, uh, open eyes and open ears that you'd share with us all that you have for us. And we take it from you today in Jesus Thank name. You, Amen. 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 Listen, enjoy this today. Be blessed by it. And then Sarah and I are going to be back at the end of the broadcast to pray with you again. He said, if you will claim me before men, I will claim you before God and all the angels. How many untold millions upon millions upon millions of people have been born again and experienced the greatest miracle ever because they heard a man or woman stand at an altar and say, all you have to do is claim him before people and he'll claim you before God. And the Holy Spirit began to tug on people's hearts and got them up out of their seat, came to an altar like this one or, or altars like it all over the world and made Jesus the Lord of their lives and were saved from hell and eternity and were promised a place with Jesus in the presence of God for all time because of these words right here. As much as the body of Christ disagrees on stuff here, stuff there, I bet you anything, every single person, regardless of denomination, regardless of background, regardless of culture, agrees on these words right here. You claim Jesus, He claims you. Somebody say weighty. This is heavy. And it didn't stop there. I mean, he went on, but it was in the middle of this that this guy interrupts Jesus. Do you know what interrupting is? It's literally saying to somebody, I hear words coming out of your mouth, but they pale in comparison to the ones I have yet to speak. So if I could get you to shut up just for a second and allow me to speak, we'll get this all worked out. Brother Keith came to our church when I was a teenager and preached a series called Humility. Oh, it hurts so good. And actually, that series is on the website. When you go and listen to that one, that was from our church. And you just picture little teenage Jeremy sitting there going, oh, oh. And I found out in that series that pride is an interrupter. Pride is an interrupter. Man, that changed the culture of our church and the ministry. And every time for like the next, I don't know how long, people, if they started to interrupt, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I won't interrupt, I apologize. Please forgive me. You know, I mean, it was nobody wanted any pride found in them anywhere. But that's what this guy did, interrupted Jesus. Why? Because what was on his mind outweighed what Jesus was already saying. Now help me, is that a just scale? or an unjust scale? Is there any financial problem that outweighs one person finding out how to make Jesus the Lord of their life? No. no. Is there any financial concern, any money issue whatsoever that outweighs one person finding out how loved they are by God? But this is an unjust scale. To interrupt what Jesus was talking to him about with, I've got a money problem. And you can hear it too. Listen, th this goes on in verse 14. Look at it. Let's put it up here. But he said to him, man, you can almost hear it in his voice, can't you? Man, come on, man. Really? Man, who made me a judge or an arbitrator over you? 
For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. The New Living Translation says it like this. Life is not measured by how much you own. Life is not measured by how much you own. I'm going to say it again because every time I do it, somebody's getting free. Life is not measured by how much you own. Life isn't measured by what you own. Here's some good news. It's not measured by what you don't own. This is great news right here. You ready? Your life isn't measured by what he owns. It just keeps getting better. Watch. Your life isn't measured by what they don't own. Life isn't measured by what you own. Life doesn't consist in the abundance of the things you possess. Life can't be measured in dollar amount. Life can't be measured in square footage. Life can't be measured by the emblem that's on the hood of your car. Life can't be measured by the name brand sewn into your jeans. Life can't be measured that way. But yet so many people are endeavoring to, aren't they? Just notice the way we, we talk to each other and about each other. You look at what somebody's driving. You look at what somebody's wearing. You look at what somebody's living in. And your thought is, man, that guy is doing well. How do you know? You, how do you know? Well, you're looking at stuff to measure how somebody's, how much life they're living. You're using the wrong stick. You can't measure life with stuff. You can't measure life with things. Amen. Are you with me this morning? And this is, this is something that's beginning to work in Sarah and I right now because it's really, it's reprioritizing everything. Matter of fact, not long ago, we sat down with each other and put, put on paper, we put something at to the top and we said, what is the most valuable? What is the most weighty? And we started making our list. And can I tell you what's not number one? Money. Money. Now, here's what's interesting about all this. I know you and you know me. We believe in a good God, don't we? I not only believe in a God that wants me to be wealthy, I believe in a God that needs me to be wealthy. To establish his covenant. And for the sake of my own generation, he needs me to preach to them how to prosper in Him. How to prosper in Him. But the interesting thing about money is God can't trust you with it until He knows that you know what to do with it. Until He knows that you know it's not first place. Oh, He wants you to have it. He needs you to have it. And we, we, we say this a lot, you know, God wants his people wealthy. I'm going to say something. There's a lot of people he doesn't want wealthy because they don't know what to do with it. They have no idea what to do with it. What if you owned your own business and you had somebody working for you that just made stupid mistake with money after mistake after mistake? Evidently, they don't know what needs to be done with the money, your money. Do you go give them more? No. You can't give them more until you know that they know what you want done with it. So to increase God's way, we got to know right away, money's not first. It's not even second. It's not even third. You go study the scriptures and find out all the things that are more valuable than money. Proverbs talks about, you know, this one, wisdom. A wise word is greater than riches, is greater than gold. Loyalty is greater than riches. Truth is greater than gold. There are so many things that far outweigh money, and yet we keep giving weight to the money problem, the money issue, the money thoughts. You wake up with it. You think about it. You go about your day with it on your mind. And the more it's on your mind, the more it's coming out of your mouth. The more it's coming out of your mouth, the more you're acting on what you think and what you say. And you go to bed with the same thought and problem on your mind that you woke up with and carried around with you all day. Let me tell you something. Every time you think it and speak it, you give more weight to it. And it's as though worrying about it 
is going to add money to you. As a matter of fact, if you were to couple Luke 12 with the exact same account in Matthew 6, Jesus is saying the exact same things, and he says, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to your stature? It'd be silly to think that a short guy could worry real hard and grow an inch, <laughs> right? You come across a little guy and he's just, mm -hmm. what are you doing, buddy? I'm just I'm trying to grow. Well, it's not going to work. <laughs> Did you know it's just as foolish to think that worrying about money is going to increase you financially? If anything, it will subtract from you. It'll take away. So Jesus responds to this guy, and I guarantee you it's not what this guy came to hear. And I, I love what you see here because, you know, Jesus, he could have responded to him any, any number of ways. This guy interrupted his message. Jesus, Jesus could have said, we'll deal with that later. He, he could have just said, ushers, help me. He, anything. He could have said anything, but he responded to this guy, and it wasn't just with one word. He took the next something like 20 verses to respond and to correct this way of thinking. Everything Jesus said to this man, again, not what he came to hear, but it was the truth, wasn't it? Yeah. It was a correction to this covetous way of thinking. What is covetousness? It's just simply wanting something too much. It's just wanting it too much. And this guy obviously has given this money issue between him and his brother so much weight that he's come to Jesus and said, you tell him. What's that mean? We're not speaking anymore. I wonder if this is still happening. <laughs> you think? Maybe? There's a chance that this kind of thing is still going on. Amen. Certainly not in the church, right? <laughs> Certainly not between brothers and sisters in the church. Certainly not between Christian families has money crept in between people and caused strife and caused division and caused us to not even be able to speak to each other anymore. I think it's still going on. And Jesus took 20 verses to correct it. You know, the Lord spoke to me one day about this. He said, didn't I say, who I, who I love, I correct? I thought, Lord, you love this guy. <laughs> and then I realized, he's not just correcting him, is he? He's correcting me. Anybody else? Yeah. He's correcting us because he loves us. And this correction culminated with this one statement right here. You ready? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Now, I know you've heard that verse before. I grew up hearing it too. But it wasn't until recently that I realized Jesus spoke that in correction to this covetous way of thinking, in correction to giving weight to the wrong thing. What's he saying? Give weight to the kingdom. Give weight to God's way of doing things. Give weight to what he calls weighty. And all this stuff you're worried about gets added to you when you give weight to the right side of the scale. Come on, are you with me this morning? Now look at how he corrected this. Uh, he corrected it with a parable. In verse 16, he said, The ground of a certain rich man yield, yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? This is, this is the best problem to have right here. And it's a good question. How many of you believe you're coming to a day in your life where you will have too much? You will have so much that you will have to ask yourself, what do I do with all of this? Now think about that. Isn't that what Jesus said? I came that you'd have life and have it how? More what? That's a measurement. That's what Jesus is revealing here. It's not just that you can't measure life with stuff. The other side of that revelation is life can be measured. Just not with that. Come on, listen. Life can and should 
be measured. If I were to ask you, how much life are you living? How would you measure that? Do you look at the house? Do you look at the car? Do you look, look at the clothes? Do you look at somebody else's house, car, clothes, stuff? Because if you do, again, time out, using the wrong stick to measure it. You're using the wrong gauge. You can't measure life with that stuff. It's like riding along in your car and the, the check engine light comes on and there's smoke coming out of the hood and you hear a bang, crash, boom coming out of the back and you think to yourself, now wait a second, how much money do I have in savings? Okay, no, I'm good. <laughs> no, that light came on in the car because it's measuring the life of the car. What you have in savings doesn't measure the life of the car. Are you with me? Yeah. How foolish it would be to think, oh, I don't need to pull over. I don't need to get this checked. I don't need to put gas in the car. I don't need to change the oil. Why? Because I got money. These are nice clothes. I live in a big house. This car was expensive. It doesn't need gas. Yeah. <laughs> You're using the wrong thing to measure the life of that car. In the same way, you can't use that stuff to measure your life. But Jesus said, I came that you'd have life and have it how? more abundantly. That's a measurement. That's overflow. That's too much. That's what do I do with all this? And that's the position this guy is in. And notice the ground yielded, Jesus said. The ground did this. In other words, God did this. It's God who gives the increase. And he said, notice in verse 17, he thought within himself, there is a big part of the problem right there. He thought within himself. Most people ne never learn to think beyond themselves. He thought within himself, saying, What shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I'll do this. I'll pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and my goods, and I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. These are pathetic life goals. Here's a wealthy man, and if somebody were to sit down with him and interview him and say, you have so much, what's the plan? What's the goal? Have you dreamed about where you're headed? Have you dreamed about what you're going to do with all this? And he takes a long look down at the ground, looks back at him and says, yes. I've thought for a long time what I will do with all of this. And I have a plan. I plan to eat a lot. <laughs> I plan to drink. Yes, I plan to eat and I plan to drink. <laughs> and that's all. <laughs> this is pathetic. This is pathetic. And it's called retirement. <laughs> Now listen, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with, with retirement. It's what you do with the time that yeah. you now have. Yeah. Because your time far outweighs your money. And if the greatest thing you can come up with to do is eat whatever you want and drink whatever you want and nobody can tell you otherwise, well, let's just see what Jesus says. You get mad at him instead of me. He... <laughs> Notice what Jesus said to him in verse 20. But God said to him, you fool. This night your soul will be required of you. Then whose those things, uh, then whose will those things be which you have provided? And so is he, or what? So is he a fool, notice this, who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. So many people have looked at this as though it were some opposing viewpoint to us who believe God wants us prosperous. No, the, the, the problem here is laying up the treasure for yourself and just laying it up and laying it up and laying it up. That's not the purpose for money. This is who you are My help in time of need Oh, this is who you are Peace that passes on this is who you are, my rescue in distress. Oh, this is who you are. You still my soul and give me rest. This is who you are, my help in time. Oh, this is who you are. Peace 
You know, we love spending this time with you in the Word. We love spending time worshiping the Lord with you in music. And what we're going to do today is continue to worship the Lord right now, but we're going to worship Him with our finances. The Lord instructed us uh, a week or so ago to begin to receive offerings right now in this time on these broadcasts because of the vision and the assignment that's stern in our hearts. He gave us this very simple word. I want you preaching Jesus everywhere to everyone every day. And that's the assignment that's, that's on Pearson's Ministries right now. We're a weekly broadcast. This legacy television is going out once a week, and we're thankful for that step and the way the Lord's opened that door. But we know that to do what He's called us to do, it's got to take the next step from a weekly broadcast to a daily outreach. And to do that, it's going to take more people. It's going to take more equipment. It's going to just take more as you can imagine. And I, I want to go back to the book of Exodus where we read last week in chapter 35, when Moses was receiving an offering, it says, everyone came whose heart was stirred. You know, that's who we're looking for to partner with us in this ministry. And, and I would say this to you, and maybe you've never heard anybody say this when they receive an offering, but if your heart's not stirred by this, <laughs> keep your money. <laughs> and, and, and I mean that in all sincerity. We're looking for people whose hearts are stirred by this assignment, by this vision to preach the word of faith to another generation, teaching them how to live by faith in the day of grace. So maybe you're, maybe you're our parents' age or our grandparents' age, and it stirs in you to think about your children and your grandchildren hearing the word the way you've heard it. Well, if that's stirring in you, then get involved with this project. Get involved with Project 365 and help us preach Jesus everywhere to everyone every day. You know, I, I look at this offering that was received by these people who came with, with a willing spirit and a heart that was stirred up and in chapter 36, it, it got so out of hand, if you will, that they spoke to Moses saying, the people bring much more than enough for the service of the work of the Lord that he commanded us to do. And in chapter 36, verse seven, it says, the material they had was sufficient for the work to be done. Indeed, it was too much. So That's where we're headed. And when I say we, I'm talking about you too. Because Sarah and I, when we pray over you, our partners, we believe that the same anointing for increase that's on us and our ministry, it's on you. And we pray every single day that God would cause you to know that the seed you've sown into this ministry is opening doors for you, your family, your business, your churches, your ministries. And we want you to know that there is a day coming. It's, it's not a day of, of not having enough. It's not the day of having just enough. You and I both are headed Praise God for too much. That's excess. Having too much to preach the gospel. Having too much to serve other people. Having too much to give into the work of the kingdom all over the world. That is where we're going and that's what stirs us up. You know, from the beginning of this ministry, we have been absolutely overwhelmed by you who have partnered with us yes. in, taking, um, in taking Jesus all over the world. It has been absolutely seriously overwhelming and we are so thankful yeah. you know it, it, it is just like second corinthians says that um it has caused us to give thanks to god right. and we have given glory to god for what he has done and who he has drawn to this ministry so we just want to say thank you again Amen. and we want to pray over you and want to pray over your seed today Amen. so father we thank you thank once you, again Lord for what you have done with this ministry and how you have spoke, spoken to people and you have drawn hearts and you have stirred people all over the world. And we want to say thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. It is so you who has done us. it. And we give you praise and we give you thanks for it. And right now we pray over this precious seed of every single person who is sowing today. We pray over their seed and thank we you, call Lord. it blessed. We believe that uh, we receive as a as a um, as partners together in this work, we receive increase and we receive increase on every single level of their life and in their homes that they would start to experience days of heaven on the earth that they would begin to experience days of healing in their households that they would experience that overflow and that the windows of heaven being open to them. Thank you, we Jesus. receive that from you today and we praise you for the good work that you have begun that you will you will complete it. Yes, you and will. You will be, you will continue to, Jesus, to work in every life um, that is connected to this ministry and the sowing and the giving. And we thank you, Lord, for the increase in the harvest in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, if Lord. you want to get involved in this offering today, it's very simple. All you have to do is text. You can do this via text. All you have to do is text LTV and any dollar amount, LTV5, LTV5000, whatever you want to do. 
All you have to do is text that to 28950. We'll get that. We'll pray over it. We'll bless it. And we'll give it to Jesus and tell him to do whatever he wants done with it. <laughs> Thanks so much for being a part of this today. We'll see you again next time on Legacy Television. Bye-bye.